Hello everybody, this is Frogman. Welcome back to Compact Claustrophobia. We've been spending a lot of time doing a few things in between episodes and I'm staring at the floor because you guys probably know where I'm at right now. Uh, last episode, we spent a little bit of time building a reasonably decent sized fission reactor from nuclear craft. And I have since done quite a bit of tuning and playing around and fiddling with it and... I was having issues, at least issues in between episodes, of creating enough energy with this reactor so that we could fire up and light the other reactors. So there has been a few changes made to this monstrosity. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, and I'm not going to tear it open because it's working right now. But I did go ahead and add another line of reactor cells in the corners. And behind all of those coolers that are right there, those redstone and iron coolers, in both corners. So in each one of these corners in here, right in this corner, there was a gap. There was an airspace in there. So I kind of reprogrammed, reprofiled, and kind of screwed around with this thing. Because we need it to make about 20,000 RF a tick. It has to make 20,000 RF a tick in order to light the other reactor up, or at least in order to be able to power the other reactor. Now, I've since gone ahead and filled and created, or I should say crafted, a few more of these uh, capacitor banks so that we can have an output of a max input output of 30,000 just because that was a nice round number and because these are really cheap to make. I mean, they're, they're really, really, really cheap to make at this point. All I have to do is just kind of sit here and let the world uh, run and AFK a little bit and we get all of the infinity dust that we can possibly need or grains of infinity, whatever you want to call them. So in the in the in betweenium in betweenium there has been a little bit of other thing that I've been kind of playing around with and there's been a there was a discussion I know Galrath asked about it on his Manufactio Discord about how you make certain fuels with fission reactors and fission reactors you're basically stuck when we we didn't go over this because I usually never use these things basically like that I usually very rarely mess with them but you have three or four general beginning um, fuels that are all kind of based around two different types of stuff. So there's going to be the thorium-based fuels and there is going to be the uranium-based fuels that you're going to be able to play with early, early, early on in game because those are going to be the two things that you're going to be able to mine or play with. And the thorium-based fuels, again, like in this mod pack, we're getting thorium-based fuels from the, where is it? The ox or the dust. Basically, I, that was an oxide, but we're getting it from the dust that we're mining as well as we're getting the uranium. Uh, let's get the 238 out of here and do the uranium oxide, uranium. I keep clicking on the oxide. Quit clicking on the oxide. Let's find a regular one. Okay. Okay, uh, that should work. So we're going to be looking at a, well, okay, go like this then. Uranium, uranium, nice. Okay, we're basically taking the uranium grit that we're getting from immersive engineering and we're running it through an isotope separator to get the uranium-238 and the uranium-235. And you can kind of do the same thing around, I believe, with thorium. If not, thorium is going to be, let's see, thorium, 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 dust, if we run it through, again, an isotope separator, you're going to get the same kind of thing. You take these two little isotopes and you craft them. There is a 232 up there and a 230. This is all pretty much 232. But you end up with a fuel, in this case, which is called TBU fuel, which gives you a base process time of 220 minutes. Wow, 120 minutes, and it gives you a... Uh, base power per reactor cell of 60 RF a tick. So we're just going to kind of play with this right now, even though we're, we're using a completely different fuel in the uh, reactor that we're messing with. I just kind of wanted to go over this really quickly. What happens is, is you take that fuel and you run it through a reactor, and that reactor is going to give you depleted TBU fuel. So you take that depleted TBU fuel and you run it through a fuel reprocessor machine that is going to give you tiny clumps of uranium, tiny clumps of uranium, tiny clumps of neptonium, and tiny clumps of neptonium. Now you can see where you're getting this stuff. So if we click on this, this is going to be utilized as 236 neptonium. We can then use that to craft various fuels. This fuel can then be run through a fission reactor to give you an LEN 238 depleted fuel, which again, when you run that through a new processor, you're going to get neutonium. Neptonium, Plutonium, Americanium, and along all the way down the nasty line of all of this wonderful fuels. And as you can see, like say right here, we've got depleted oxides, depleted, 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 depleted. Can I find the real actual honest to God fuel? That one right there. This is a nasty fuel. Nasty, nasty, nasty fuel. But it makes an ungodly amount of power. Look at how much of this. 1200 RF a tick. Per, for uh, 48 minutes of runtime, and its base gen heat is 900 heat per tick per cell. 
which means that you're when you're looking at these kinds of deals, in order to get down there, you, you have to spend a lot of time running a lot of these other base fuels. And kind of the reason why I don't play with fission reactors much past this, the oxides, just the oxides for that matter, is like we're going to be, we're, what we're going to be running this reactor on, or what we have been running it on, is LEU-235 oxide. So that's going to be LEU-235, where is it, that one. That one, right there. Because of the fact that this is basically uranium, it's just regular old uranium-238 and a clump, or I should say a clump of, back up here a minute, a single uranium-235 oxide. And an easy way to get oxides, if I would quit hitting the freaking, come back here, where are we? I need to quit hitting the, the back button on my thing. 235 oxide, there's just, the problem is there's just too many of these fuels. The way I'm getting the 235 oxide is very simple. It's just adding oxygen to a regular 235 clump, this little piece right here. And that's not hard. That's pretty much in this, where is it? This one? I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Go in here. It's basically, all I do is I take a little bit of oxygen. I get the oxygen out of here, which is we're just, I built another electrolyzer and I let it start working again so that it would craft. Hy Why is it not getting rid of the hydrogen? It should be. You need to go up there. Thank you. And we're just voiding everything except the oxygen at this point. So I take that oxygen and I run it through, where is it, this machine over here. And we just throw a little bit of uranium in there. And it, the difference between the two, let me just see, show you the reason why I'm doing that. Uh, the LEU, or the low fuel, the light fuel, is a base power of 168 RF a tick with a very low heat generation and a runtime of 60 minutes. If you look at the regular LEU 235 fuel, which are 233, if you believe is right here, what we can craft, where is it? It is, I think it's that one. I think it's the one we can craft at this point. That one right there, because this is just basically, well, hang on. I'm going to have to find it again. That's the other thing is playing with this rabbit hole of various fuels that you can get. So the regular LEU 235 fuel gives you 120 process time, or 120 RF a tick per cell, a runtime of 60 minutes, and 50 heat units per tick. And then basically all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of oxygen on that and getting another 40 RF a tick out of the out of the fuel, basically. That's all I'm doing. So uh, let's jump in here. We'll take a look at this little guy. Uh, where are we? Where are we? I've already run it a little bit. We've had a few of them come through. But yes, basically that's all we're going to do is we're going to run that for here. I have a, this set up to where the point it's making 22,736 RF a tick. And we have a minus number on this point here where I could actually probably remove a few of these coolers and maybe stick another cell in there. Because of the way I built this, because of the fact I stacked the cells on top of each other, we're losing efficiency uh, with this reactor. And there's a reason for why you would, in a normal sense, with the fission reactors, want to run a dirty reactor. It's called a breeder reactor. Basically, what you want to do is you want to burn the fuel as fast as you possibly can so that you can get a lot of said fuel and then run it through a reprocessor to get the better fuel. And then you keep doing that. You would have several of these little bitty reactors, probably even smaller than this, that just do nothing but create other fuels for better reactors until you get to the point where you're happy in this range of silliness over here with the amount of output you're getting. And then you use these to make all of the power that you want. I wanted something that made 20,000 RF a tick. So I built something that made 20,000 RF a tick. All right. So we got all that going. We've got a few other things going. There has been a little bitty slight change here where I was fighting this and fighting this and fighting this and fighting this and trying to get enough power out of this stinking cube so that I could light this, uh, this reactor up. It just would not do it. I don't know whether it's just the, there's a, there's a, I don't know if there's like a, you know, there's that cobblestone pillar I had to use to get in and out of that thing. I don't know if there is like a limit of the output for the tunnels. I don't know if it's something else that's going on, but for whatever reason, the only way I could get enough power out of that thing to light these magnets in this reactor room was to pull it out of this room and do the little stack me on top of things. Now, once again, when we get this thing running, and it might even still have a little bit of heat in it right now. It's got a little bit, not a lot. Once we get this thing running, it should run itself. It should maintain the power it needs to keep itself happy. Should, theoretically. Again, we're not really probably going to run this thing. I mean, I might try to save uh, siphon a little bit of power off of it, 
but I don't know how much of the actual power I'm going to care about coming out of this machine right now. So there is one thing that I did see that I wanted to craft before we got too excited, and that was a bin. I was kind of looking through the other systems and kind of things, and actually should say I was looking through the achievements list. And like say, for those of you that are looking to try to wander through the mess that is the, the ugliness, there is actually a chain of a line to try to get to curium. Curium's ouch kind of stuff. So is Americanium and all that kind of wonderful thing. But there is lines that you can ruin through to kind of try to figure out what's going on. And I noticed something in here that I've not been aware of. That dude, right there. That's a machine interface, not some machine. That's another something we can put up on a few things. Um, where is it? Where did it go? There was a cool little thing that just appeared in here. Come on, brain. Craft a photovoltaic tile. Where is it? Blend and fold. This is salt fission. We're not going to be playing with it. Neutron bombardment temperature control. I saw it. There it is, right there. Uh, craft a universal bin. One thing we don't really have is a trash can. I mean, we do. But we don't have a trash can. And especially don't have a trash can for energy. So we may need one. Let's see if I can K craft that. So we're getting the zirconium ingots from zirconium that we're getting from the process that is in this cube right there for other things. So can I make some of these? One, two, yes. I just want to make sure that if we have an energy problem... Okay, cool. If we have an energy problem inside this cube... I can kill this sucker. I can basically just let it run and produce whatever it needs to produce, and then we can send things on down its merry way. Because basically all I want to do, I know it sounds silly, with this reactor, is I want to take, what is it, hydrogen and hydrogen, and turn it into deuterium in a larger amount than what we're currently getting, and then we're going to make another one of these reactors that we're going to then take deuterium and deuterium or deuterium and hydrogen and turn it into Neptunium, Neptunium, not Neptunium, uh, neutron something or other. So reactor, eh, come back here. Reactor, 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 reactor. What is this thing called? It's called a fusion core. Fusion core, fusion core, fusion core. Into a fusion core. And a fusion core is going to give us various things. We want this neutron fluid right here. And I believe we can get neutron fluid from being able to do a little bit of goofing around either with deuterium running straight deuterium or running deuterium and tritium or a few other things. Now we can make a lot of these other little fuels and this is kind of where this mod overlaps with mechanism or mechanism overlaps with this mod is because some of the fuels that you can run in this are the same type of fuel you can run in a fusion reactor from mechanism. So those of you that are kind of aware of how fusion reaction works in mechanism, the similar, is, the similar kind of ideas here. Same kind of thing, same kind of fuels, just created differently, and I do not believe they're cross-compatible, but just, just as a one of those, that's why I kind of understand how this one works, because I understand how the other one works. Let's go outside and do the one thing that I have to do now. I had to make a whole bunch of this stuff, and I was not happy about it doing it. Actually, we need to go into you and flick that switch. But I had to make a whole bunch of resonant flux ducts to be able to get the power out of that cube into this cube so that we could light those magnets up all the way around. And they're going to take a minute, even though they're still being stupid. I don't understand why it still takes so long to do it. But I have tested it, and it does light all these magnets up eventually. So that's what we have to do is we have to kind of let this guy just sit here and, and charge up. So we have to charge all of the electromagnets up, and then we have to wait for this temperature to get over 8,000, I believe, or 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 80,000, 80,000. So now it's happy. It's starting to light up. We're going to get a little bit of temperature going on, and as soon as it gets all of these stinking magnets up and going, we'll be ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit right here and babysit this thing and get it lit up and ready to go. And hopefully, in the, the end of the episode, we're going to hear a really nasty noise come out of this thing. I don't know if the sounds are turned on for this one, but this one is really loud. So I will see you guys while we wait. Hey there, guys. We're just checking back in here really quickly. If you notice, we've kind of got a red situation going on here. It's because we hit a wall. We hit a wall where I couldn't run the power, the magnets and get the heat temperature up at the same time. So um, I'm kind of doing this a little bit probably off, but I don't want to be sitting here all day long trying to get this silly thing running. So uh, we're going to shut that off, make sure it doesn't turn itself on. I should be able to, and if I remember correctly, it's been a really, really, really long time since I've played with one of these things. And you guys in the comments, please, by all means, correct me if I'm 
I'm wrong, but I should be able to pump the majority of the heat that I need into the actual fusion core itself. And then turn the power on and light up the magnets, get them going, and basically go from there. So what I think we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get this thing as warmed up as I possibly can, which is going to be somewhere around 6,000 Kelvin, 6,000 kilokelvin. I'm assuming that's what that means. And we'll hopefully be able to go at this because this has been sitting here for well over an hour now and I was not breaching anything more than 1900 and I went ahead and disconnected the walls for all of this other stuff. So now we're technically pumping around 20,000 RF attack, 40,000 RF attack, whatever it is, into this machine right now so that it can actually warm up. And I went ahead and segregated that challenge out our channel, channel, challenge channel out. I wonder actually. Is that going to make any difference? No. Okay. So we're, we're having to feed power into the machine through the top here so that it can warm up. I've also got all the walls and everything disconnected so the magnets are all off. We are going to need the 20,000 RF a tick that I was talking about to keep these magnets lit long enough to be able to get this thing up to temperature. And we're at a getting closer to being up where we need to be. Once that happens, this thing should be able to kind of sort of run itself, I hope. So what I'm going to do is when I get to that point, we're going to come in here. When we get to about 6,000 RF a tick or 6,000, and we're still okay on fuel in here for right now. Once we get to about 6,000 Kelvin in that thing, I'm going to shut the 6 or 7,000, maybe 7. I'm going to shut the output on this off so that it can charge this up and then charge this up. Yes, we're going to lose a little bit of heat out of that other system over there. We're going to lose a slight amount of heat, but what should be allowed to be able to do on that part is I should be able to then whack that sucker full of whatever we can get out of this system, which is going to be, what is it? I forget what this thing holds. 30 million plus whatever this holds, which is 16, I think. 16 million. Yeah, we'll be, able, we'll be able to whack all of that into that sucker as hard as we can, hopefully. I also went ahead and connected the main base power up to this thing so that we're using every amount of power that we've got right now. And I did a little bit of a reconfigure on some of this other stuff in here as far as what we're going to do for running it. Since we do have refined storage capabilities, um, I have the refined storage fluid storage blocks. And I picked this fluid storage blocks because they're easy to kind of pick and choose which fluids I want to save. So we're going to just keep this little thing running constantly, plus the other one in the other room. I really need to quit hitting the walls. And they're going to just continuously input into these two fluid storage blocks. And what we will eventually do is we will separate this refined storage tools system, whatever, blah, out of the regular net network. We'll put a controller in here, and its sole entire job will be to manage this reactor so we're going to get to that point eventually right now i'm not really concerned about it we're just going to kind of watch things work so i was just kind of wanting to get you guys caught up we're catching up on five thousand three more thousand to go Alrighty then we're getting ready to cross that threshold i've done a little bit of reading and studying and we're going to hope that this works i guess if it blows up i do have a backup uh several backups actually so um <laughs> had to go digging for it, but the uh, command for anybody that needs to know it is backup start. So let's just do another one right there, and that'll make sure we have another one while we're at it. But if this thing blows up, then I know I'm going to have to kind of go back to the drawing board and play around a little bit more. We need a lot more power production in order to keep this thing running, or for that matter, probably an entirely separate reactor specifically for the fusion core, which is a little insane, if you ask me. So... What we're going to do is we're just going to sit there and let that roll up and hopefully we don't blow anything up once it hits 8,000. I do have a redstone signal turned on on the bottom of the, the, the main fusion core, which is going to make sure hopefully that it doesn't automatically trigger reaction and explode once it crosses this line. All right, now we're 8,000, which means it's as high as it can go on the outside. Now we have a big problem now is that I have to be able to light the rest of the system up. So we're going to lose a little bit of temperature doing this, I believe. Unfortunately, this is a problem with these reactors is if you don't have a massive amount of way of being able to produce a considerable amount of power, you end up with a really big problem like this. So what we're going to do is it's going to sit there and kind of be just this direction. We're going to leave it alone for right now. I'm going to go outside 
and we're going to go in here, like I said. And what we need to do is we're going in 5,000. 4,000, 5,000, or we, we're actually climbing in this. Excellent. All right, good deal. So we're going to let that fill up now. Now that we hit that point, we're going to let this dude kind of just chill out, fill his way up at 5,000 RF a tick. And when we get that battery and this section in here full meaning there's going to be a massive amount of power we can drain out of here when we need to. Then we'll turn this guy on. And hopefully, as long as he's not just losing his mind, which it shouldn't be, looks like we're okay, what we'll do is we'll slowly turn on all of these little bitty little connections that we have, hopefully with the backup amount of power that we've got sitting there in the... Uh, hopefully, hopefully, with the amount of power that we'll have in this battery right here, once it gets to that point, we'll be okay. So, uh, again, I'm going to kind of take a quick break here, and then we're going to let that fill up, and I'll be back with you guys when we get ready to flick the switch. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. Cool, 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 cool. That is going to be roughly right around 40 million RF a tick stored. So we've got 30 in that and 16 in here. So that's a 46 million RF. Hopefully that's going to be enough to do the job. Uh, never mind the absorption. I had a uh, golden apple so that I could get a little bit of radi radiation removal. So that's the only problem with running fission reactors is they put off a lot of radiation. So it's pretty not cool, not fun, not awesome. Alrighty. What we're going to need to do right off the bat, I think, is I'm probably going to want to make sure I can at least hit all of these angles right there, okay? Because when I place that one in, it's going to automatically power these. We're going to be pulling power out of this central section just by connecting to it. So these rings, the outside rings, once everything is warmed up and ready to go, we should be okay to be able to do this. Now, I do have the little lever on the bottom that we can do things with, so we should have, I don't know how much time, but we're going to go ahead and connect things up. Oh, nope, 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 down. Just go down. Quick, 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 quick. Connect everything back up. And... Yeah, I was afraid that that was going to happen. I was really, really, really afraid that was going to happen. We're not capable of doing that just yet. So let's do this. We're going to run that back up to where it needs to be. We need to stay at least over 8,000 in order to make this work. So what I'm going to have to do now, I'm pretty sure, is we're going to have to let this guy charge back up. Which is going to take a couple of seconds. Come on, warm back up, dude. I may have to put it on its own separate power supply in here using one of those cells that we currently have. I don't think I have a cell that's capable of doing that right now. That should have just been no problem. What the heck? Um, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20... Hmm. Let me see. Which side does that come out of? Which side does this come out of? This may be one of those episodes where I sit here and I fiddle fart around with something for a while. It's on the west side until it works. Because once it lights, once it lights, it'll go to work. That's the west side. So this one right there is the one going to the top. And I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Okay. I think. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's go in the main box and see what we got. Are you chewed, juiced back up? You're back at temperature. If I just place one of these on, now, oh, nuts. Put it down, shift, click it on. What happens? Hello? Hello, hello? Let's try this one. There it goes. Man, temperature just drops right off the bat. I don't know if we can do this this way. We're going to have to let these charge back up. I may not have enough power. Even at this point, I may not have enough power. Which is bad because we do have a freaking, like I said, there's 30, 30 some odd thousand RF a tick capable of coming out of this. This is full. 
this is not this is draining but it's full so we may need to go ahead and do a little bit of finagling with this thing I may need to make this up to 40,000 oh wow this is the finagly part of this problem because normally what I would use with this system is I would use some type of wireless power transmission to try to make this system work so we may end up having to just sit here and fiddle around with it until it does what it needs to do we're getting a little bit of interaction come on quit quit doing that how much power are you getting? You're getting 12,000 RF a tick in. Are you serious? Am I going to have to seriously build an entirely different structure to make this work? Yeah. What are we doing out? Not much. See, this, this is the problem. It's a power flow problem. It's I can't get enough power out of this cube to get into this thing to do the work. Huh. Okay. Well, that's cool. I guess I'm going to have to keep fiddling around with this, guys. I was hoping this would be a quick, nasty, disgusting, over with, and ready to go done process. It's not. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I think... And we'll try to keep that sucker hot enough. And I don't know. I'll fiddle around with it. So I will see you guys in a little while. We're at a break point. Let's see what happens. This one is charging. Why are you not working? Oh, because I shut them off. Right, 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 right. Okay. I did this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to try this. I hopefully have enough. I don't have enough, do I? Shoot. Um, how did I use all that? Oh, I used it up doing something else. Um, what does this stuff do? This stuff does 9,000 RF a tick. Oh, poo. Poo, 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 poo. Do we have any more of this? Did I make any more? No. Crap. This is the problem. This is the fight. That is the fight. Now, I guess I could probably set one down on top of the other. But this is the fight. Oh, poop. Let's go in here and see what we can't clean up. Let's see if we can borrow, borrow a little bit of stuff. I'm going to borrow you. And I'll borrow you. And I'm going to borrow that and that. And that can go back to me being that. This doesn't need to be that good stuff. This can just be this. We'll do that in a second. So some of these are hooked up. Okay, good. Give me you. At, up, over, up, over, up, over. It's such a pain in the butt. Give me that one. Thank you. Up. And give me that one. And all right, so what we're going to try this time, and I don't think it's probably going to work because I took that one energy cell that I had and I stuck him here in the center so that he can pull things out. And I have his redstone control shut off. All I need is a blast of energy going into this thing. That's all I need at this point. So um, everything should be off in here. And if this works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and play around. Those should be hooked up. Those should be hooked up. This is set to where it needs to go. All we got to do is turn things on. This is off right now. So we go outside and hopefully charge some e-magnets up. Go back in. And please don't lose too much power. Good deal. Okay. Or too much power. Too much temperature. I'm waiting on the number. As soon as it says all the magnets are up. Come on, magnets. Come on. Come on, magnets. Don't lose so much temperature. Are we up? No. Which one's off? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. These stupid magnets. I just can't get enough power out of the wall. Turn this on. Turn this on so that we don't lose too much power temperature whatever toroid size energy power go down 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 go 
Turn on. Hit. Come on, baby. <laughs> ah, sweet. Now, hopefully we don't lose all the power by the time this all shuts off that this is going to produce before we can get to it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't, 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 don't. Everything, all I need you to do right now is power those magnets. That's it. Temperature's coming up. Wonderful. Please, magnets, stay on. <laughs> oh, crap. Um, all right, so we're getting a little low on this. Why are we low on this? You should be exporting hydrogen gas. Hello? What are you doing? Why are you not? Um, what did I do with those? I thought I crafted a bunch of stack upgrades for that. Um, maybe I did it in here? Yeah, give me this. You in go. Tell me you work that way. Okay, there we go. We're working. All righty then. Now, once we get to the next temperature phase, which I forget exactly where that is, um, we're going to start making even more random silliness. So hopefully we have enough power to keep these magnets running. And I don't think I need to inject power into it anymore at this point. No, we're, we're, okay, so we can do this. We can do this. Quit wasting power. Quit, 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 quit. I think. Yes. Cool, 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 cool. All right, for the next step, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to sit right here and hopefully not watch this thing explode. So I will be back. This is probably going to be a multi-day recording. So we're just going to have some fun and see what happens. So I'll see you guys once we get to a point where it's doing its thing. Well, we said we were waiting on things to start happening. Here's the fun part about things to start happening. We're warming up. We're doing things. We're using up some hydrogen. And we're starting at very minimal to make some small amounts of RF. The heat temperature needs to come up quite a bit and our efficiency seriously needs to climb, but it's making RF. It's not a whole lot right now, but it's making RF. So we're going to have to do some fiddling around. We're going to be doing some playing around, and I know this is probably going to be a rather disjointed, disjumbled, whatever kind of a episode is the way they go, but I've been working on this for the last, what is this? This is going to be number three now, trying to get this thing up and running. In about an hour, probably a little bit less of me sitting here playing around, this whole system is going to become self-sustaining. This reactor is going to be able to power all of its rings and all of its electromagnets and all of the fun stuff, and we're going to be able to just sit here and let it do what it needs to do. Now, I am probably going to have to, I've already added, I, I'm probably going to have to put a stack of the speed upgrades and the energy upgrades in this electrolyzer to get it to be able to keep up with the system. We've already used um, a reasonably decent amount of hydrogen. Uh, yeah, we've used quite a bit of hydrogen. I'm going to have to step that dude up and probably put another one in there, or I'm going to have to make a whole bunch more of these. Again, this is not ridiculously hard to make. We can definitely do this. But as soon as this thing in here starts outputting at least 20,000 RF a tick, which we're starting to see the efficiency rise, and we're getting a little more. I need to keep toggling this button, and I don't know why. I guess we'll just leave the input overflow on at this point. I'm just concerned that it's going to kind of show it shut off. I guess what we're doing here is it's it's allowing it to come all the way down before it allows anything in. So these new buttons, these are buttons are new since the last time I've played with this mod, so it's rather interesting. I know, 410, 412, this is not an amazing number, but notice how quickly this is starting to rise. We've been sitting here kind of playing around with it for a little while. Temperature's climbing. Um... That's, I don't even want to guess at that number right now. And we're doing 50, 
thousand kilokelvin a tick in the rise on the temperature. Of course, the that number is going down slowly, and it will eventually hit a spot where it balances out. But I am guessing pretty soon this number is going to start drastically jumping, especially once we start getting the efficiency up. Now, these things are totally based on how you build them and how you run them and what kind of fuel you put in them. And I, I see we can start to see the, the center is finally starting to turn. That's cool. That means that we're starting to actually react. We're actually starting to do things. When this thing is running at, at full warp speed going, that centerpiece sits there and spins and spins and spins and spins and spins. And it's really, really, really cool. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and hopefully not break things. I want to put this in over here so that it's in the center so it's nice and even and then I will have to uh, we'll have to we'll have to move this over eventually I'm not gonna be too terribly concerned about it right now I assume I'm going to have to do something like this right there to be able to power these two sides and we're because of the crappy um, because of the 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 only thing that I have right now are these uh, these ducks. This may be a little bit more awkward to try to keep running right now. We're probably going to have to keep some of this stuff going until we can get the cryo stabilized ducks. Once we get cryo stabilized ducks, I'll be able to make this a little better. I do not believe there's any kind of wireless at all transmission RF whatever. Uh, I don't think we have any type of wireless transmission as far as this mod pack goes, which is kind of sucky as far as power goes. Uh, we'll, we'll just deal with it, I guess, at that point. So whatever, however that all wants to work, however this stuff goes, efficiency's coming up, temperature's coming up. We're making 720 RF tick, and I'm Im immediately trying to inject that right back into the system. So hopefully this connects to that, connects to that, and everything works fine. So I am going to end it here, guys. We got a system up and running. It is going to sit here and slowly produce us stuff and the power and a few other things. But end all be all is, is this dude is going to pretty much going to be there to produce the products that we need in order to be able to run another one of these to make Glowstone. So did I run out of stuff? Yes. Come on. Do that. That was a stupid idea. But anyhow. I'm going to call it here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.